advantage if they are? Uh, I would say fairly similar. I mean, they, they uh, pride themselves in running the ball. Uh, the quarterback is a smart, savvy football player that understands coverages. And uh, they are a physical football team. The offensive line is very well coached. The wide receivers, you can tell, they block. You know, so you can tell a team that, that uh, plays physical and is coached the right way. Does it, does it kind of seem weird to kind of face a team that resembles you? Or? Well, I think we've, we've faced uh, those teams before. I mean, Oregon State is very similar to what we do. They're a physical team, a lot of shifts and motions. Uh, eye tricks and stuff like that and, and pride themselves in running the ball. So we faced teams like that in the past, but again, this is a high caliber team. They're, they've won 10 games for a reason and uh, we're excited for the opportunity. Morgan, what do you think of their young running backs? Uh, 10 and 13 uh, both provide a lot. You know, I would say 10, uh, you know, flashes a little bit more in terms of the, uh, you just, you know, dip in the shoulder, getting those extra yards. 13 is more of the slasher. Both of them very effective, and you can tell they, they have all the confidence in the world in, in both of them, and they've been productive for a reason. Great offensive line, and like I said, they, they do a great job with, with uh, not only zone, outside zone, their counter, they run everything at you. Are they hard to get turnovers off of? Um, not in the Northwestern game, but I, hopefully there's enough rain to do that. <laughs> I think that was the biggest issue in the, in the Northwestern game. But, um, you know, ball security is something they, they pride themselves on as well. And so um, quarterback does a pretty good job of uh, making sure he's not, you know, putting himself in bad situations and, and uh, throwing the ball into bad coverage. So, like I said, he's been, he's been around enough. He sees coverages. They do a great job with checking to the sideline as well. So the offensive staff sees what coverage you're in. We got to do a great job of disguising. Got to do a great job of, of post-snap movement. Um, but uh, they're a well-coached team. Pac-12 has had some excellent quarterbacks this year. How much playing in a Pac-12 season prepares you for what Penn State can do? Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing, too, is, is just the different types of offenses that you see in the Pac-12, right? We've had our running quarterbacks, and then you've had the, uh, the, the teams a lot like us that, that pride themselves in running the ball. They're a play-action team. Uh, we'll hit you deep. Um, so they're a lot more like Oregon State uh, than, than maybe like a USC. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, if, if a team can play smash mouth football and beat you up around the ball, it's gonna be it's it's a it's a long day. It's no fun. What do you the think the versatility of their running backs having a couple guys that are really can run the ball? Well, what that do? What challenges up for next year? Well they can do a bunch of, in terms of different personnel groups, right? They can put both backs on the field at, at one time. Both of them do a great job of catching the football as well. So, you know, they'll motion the back out on air and some of their empty sets and have no problem throwing to them. Some teams they'll motion the back out and he's just an afterthought. Whereas, whereas their backs, you really have to cover them. You know, they're a good job catching the ball as well. What has been the biggest difference in, in being able to get your defense to where maybe more you like to see it than maybe at the beginning of the season? Yeah, and beginning of the season, um, you know, you had Lander Barton was a true freshman, Mamo Diabate getting his feet wet in our, in our defense. Um, some miscues early, but this is a fun group to coach. And uh, they take to coaching, they take to hard coaching. And uh, every week they've come ready to prepare. And I thought they, they got better every single week. And usually that happens when you have leadership and, and guys buy into the process and understand, okay, the film is going to show you everything. You know, don't listen to the outside noise. The film will show you everything you need to know about what we need to correct, what we need to fix. And they've done that, and uh, I'm proud of them. You talked about the evolution of the team saying they're getting better every every week throughout the season, just the natural evolution of this defense. What stands out to you about the progression to, to get to this point for the rookie? I would say just their buy in to each other, right? You're, you, you, you saw, I think, early on a bunch of guys just trying to do their, their 111th and, and trying to get their job done instead of playing together as a, as a complete defense. And you see that a little bit in the celebration now, right? is they all celebrate together and they're having they're having fun together they're buying into each other understanding that okay not only am i understanding my 111th but what that 11th does for the other guy right so um if you come watch practice it's it's fun they're having fun um it's a, a group that if you don't have that camaraderie it makes it really difficult in this defense and and so 
proud of them. Morgan, how would you assess their tight ends and the role they play in the rock? Well, first of all, you know, the, the first thing I look for, do their tight ends enjoy blocking, you know, and they enjoy blocking. So, again, an, another sign of a, of, of a well-coached team and, and a team that, you know, prides themselves in running the football. And then, uh, I mean, you look at their productivity catching the football um, on their, their away boots, their, uh, uh, their switch four verts. They have no problem. That quarterback has no problem going to their tight ends, and it's kind of a comfort level for them. Uh, they do a great job catching the football, sure-handed uh, tight ends. Do you anticipate them maybe exploiting the loss of Phillips? Uh, I, I would, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, it's a reason that, we've, that we focused on trying to get depth in that room. Zamiya Vaughn's done a great job to Travis Broughton. We've got Kane Savage, who's got some, some reps throughout the season at the nickel spot. Sione Vaki, who's proven to be a, a fantastic nickel for us. So we've got more depth, obviously, last year at, at this point than, uh, than we did last year. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you've got, uh, if, you know, a strength of a defense is, is no longer there, you bet you, you should exploit it or try to exploit it. Did Phillips involve the coaches at all in his decision? Uh, no, but we're very supportive of Clark, you know, and, and you look at what he's done for our program, the type of kid he is. Um, I'm excited for his future. I really am. He's, he's a kid that, that sacrificed a lot, that gave us everything he had while he was here, and, uh, you know, more power to him. I'm excited for him. Morgan, I saw a picture of you in a Philadelphia Eagles uniform. Were you invited to a camp? <laughs> I'm just curious. Like, and, and that was the extent of my NFL career. Yeah, it was, yeah, was three I'm days with Philadelphia. I'm from Pennsylvania. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. I loved every, every minute of it. I was, I, I was uh, let's see, one of uh, Harbaugh's favorites. He was the, he was the yeah, he was the uh, special teams coordinator at the, at the time. And uh, while, while uh, I piqued his interest, the safety coach wasn't <laughs> necessarily interested in me. So... I was, that was it. Three, three days and, and a tryout with Buffalo, and then Coach Whittingham said, enough's enough, let's get into coaching. <laughs> you got it, you got it. Morgan, can you, uh, can you just recollect a little bit, um, when you were recruiting Cole, or, or when you got a hold of his film, mm -hmm. or, or how you became aware of him? Our recruiting staff does a great job, and you know, they, they understand what I'm looking for. I told them, hey, listen, we're looking for high, high IQ, uh, tough, you know, athletes that are versatile, that can play multiple positions. His was, his was a guy that, to them, the film popped. They show me. I loved it. Um, you know, initially, he, didn't, he couldn't tell. Was he a linebacker? Was he a safety? I just loved how he would break and drive on a football. He was committed to Duke at the time, had a high, high academic uh, interest, and uh, just got in contact with him and talked to him about the safety tradition in our, in our defense, the versatility of the safety. He, him and his dad... And his mom fell in love with it. And uh, again, unique in the sense that never visited Salt Lake City and uh, decided to jump on board. But man, has he been uh, a huge, huge addition to this defense in, in terms of what he's able to do. How difficult was it to recruit not only him, but anybody at that time in the middle of COVID, guys couldn't visit? Just how difficult was that? Uh, difficult to a point. I mean, we still uh, we're we're coming off a pretty good season. Two thousand nineteen, you know, twenty twenty had its own uh, obviously with with COVID its own uh, feel. But you know, we still had a good name, and uh, the hard part for us is we we value the in person evaluation. Seeing a kid move in person, everyone can put together a good highlight film for the most part. But uh, seeing how they respond to tough coaching, seeing how they respond uh, maybe to adversity in practice, weren't able to do that. So, um, you know, like I said, with Cole, man, did we hit the jackpot. Um, I got up here a little late, but could you just reflect a little bit on, uh, on Clark and just what he's meant to your defense over Yeah, time? again, he came in and did nothing but buy into the process, buy, buy into to what we were doing. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had a million Clark Phillips, right? And, uh, you know, I'm proud of him for what he's accomplished. I'm grateful for what he's brought to our program. I've learned, you know, more from Clark than he's probably learned from me. And uh, wish him and his family nothing but the best. You know, you've had a lot of guys, you know, go to the NFL. You've had guys leave early for the NFL. Uh, how, much, um, how much advice do you try to bestow on guys when they are trying to make that underclassman choice? And 
Oh, as much as possible. You know, Coach Whittingham is the one, that obviously, that's going to spearhead that. You know, he, he talks to all the scouts. Um, we've got our scouting department. I'll talk to the, the scouts when they want to ask me questions about kids. But, um, you know, we just want to make sure we're doing what's best for the kid. Um, and if you don't do that, man, it's, 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 it's tough um, for those guys to ever come back to your program, right? So, again, you know, what's best for the kid is telling them what, what we feel, what the scouts are telling us. Sometimes that's, hey, you should move on, you should, right? Or, hey, we think you should come back. Here are the reasons why. Here's what the scouts think, right? So as, as much of an informed decision as, as they can make, we want to we'll provide as much feedback as we can. And just to follow that up, uh -huh. you know, um, what Clark has done, his, his resume to this point, uh, did you believe that he was ready to move on? At this no point? question. Speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah. Excited for him and his future. Do you get the sense that it, it's changing for maybe guys that would be maybe third round or, or third day with the chance to make NIL money that... You know, there's a chance for more, more uh, financial benefits for staying for another year. You bet. No question. There's a big drop-off in terms of signing bonus, right? When, when you're talking about maybe late second to late third, that's a, kind of a big difference in signing bonus. And, and you know, depending on NIL money that, that uh, young men can make in your college program, you bet that should be a factor in whether or not they come back. What's the strategical difference in announcing the decision to declare before the bowl game? Because I remember last year there were a bunch of guys who you know, announced that decision after the game was played. I have not thought about that. Yeah. I have not thought about it. But, hey, this. you tell me. I'll, you know, I don't know. I'll pass I it on. Last year, Penn State had a player literally right after the bowl game was over and he declared for the draft. I got gotcha. you. Well, yeah, I mean, we didn't know whether or not the – who was it? Was it uh, – for Ohio State, he's uh, one of their top wideouts, number two. wasn't wasn't Wilson. Oh, Olave. We didn't know if he was going to play in the bowl game or not. Oh, yeah, so there's a strategic advantage. Yeah, he was practicing with him. There's a strategic advantage there, not knowing who to prepare for, right? So, um, you know, for the player, it's just, hey, let's go. I'm I'm I've finished my career. I'm ready to go, and and uh, kind of letting the, the the fan base and everyone know I'm, I'm moving on. I asked with this yesterday, but as guys are trying to make up their minds, how important is it for you know you and Witt and Andy and the rest of the coaches really to, to, you know, to give these guys space to try to make up their mind and not put pressure on them? Well, it, very important. You know, again, it, it needs to be an informed decision. They need to hear from the parties that matter. Sometimes there's outside voices that can get in there that that should not be a factor, but the voices that matter are their family, obviously. What they're here, what we're hearing from the scouts, right? Which is the which is the most important, um, and then you know the advice that we give them along the way. I mean, he, I, I was an NFL scout liaison for five years, and and you know that the things that they're looking for, and so you try to, you know, educate these guys their entire time while they're with you as to what these guys are looking for, and you know, how you can increase your value, your draft value, right? So. You know, uh, are we perfect at it? No. But we, again, it's all about the play with the player in mind, his best interest in mind, and, and making sure it is an informed decision from the, from the right parties. You talked about the 2019 bump, but you've been with Utah since. Forever. Oh, man. Talk about just the overall growth trajectory of the program since you were there as a player. Yeah. Um, we, yeah, we joke about it all the time. You know, I, we in, it, we had our old facility. We had one bathroom, and it was in the. <laughs> you had to go downstairs to use it. Uh, so just from from the facilities to the, just the depth on your team of athletes, right? Your ability to recruit. I remember going to Houston, Texas, and uh, you know, really people asking, you know, Utah, what conference are you in? And and now it's hey, Scally. You know, they're calling Scally. I got a guy for you, right? So just completely different. I remember going to a, a coach. Uh, we were playing Alabama in the Sugar Bowl, and he said, well, be careful what you wish for, right? And then we beat Alabama, and, and uh, you go on and have some of the success that we've had, and, and those same coaches look at you a little, a little bit different now. So um, Coach Whittingham and, uh, you know, just the, 
the athletic department, the faith they've had in him to really, you know, he had two five and seven seasons in a row, right? And, uh, but just their belief in him to get it where it needed to be. Uh, credit to this university and, and the administrative staff and credit to Kyle Whittingham who's just done a, a phenomenal job of creating a culture, sustaining the culture, recruiting to it, and uh, just continuing to have success. Man, our offense every, every week, yeah. Just the shifting, the motioning, the the, the different sets, your your tough run game, uh, the great play action game. Oregon State very similar in that sense as well. So yeah, we faced a, a couple offenses. Most importantly, our own offense, you know. And so, it's going to be a great matchup. I think both teams are, are, are fairly even in the matchup, and it's going to be a physical battle. And we're excited for it. I look across, you know, I look at that film, and what I see is a well-coached team, a team that prides themselves in, in, in physicality, in running the football, a smart quarterback that understands coverages, uh, and a coaching staff that pays attention to the details. So much respect for Penn State and what they do. You guys have been very good when it comes to pressure this year and creating things with your pressure packages. Why do you think that is when you look back over the course of the regular season, what's really stood out about the way you guys have succeeded in that area? Well, I, you know, Lewis Powell and Luther Ellis have done a great job uh, really looking at, you know, where are we deficient, not, not only in uh, scheme, but where are we deficient in, in technique? How can we become better pass rushers? How can we get a better four-man rush? And also, how can we generate pressure from different looks? Uh, you've got some sm smart offensive line coaches, some, some very good offensive schemes out there, and and they do a great job of, of each week kind of letting me know, here's how we, we feel we can exploit them. What do you feel like that Penn State offense does best? Because we've seen the two freshman running backs, but they've got a lot of tight ends. What do you feel like they're doing best right now? Well, I, again, it, it would be the complementary uh, play-action game off their run game. It, it, they make you feel like you got to load the box and stop the run, and, and just when you do it, you know, it's, it's a – seven, eight man protection and, and three man routes down the field. And so um, a lot like us in that, in that sense, right? It, it, they pride themselves in running the ball and their play action game off of it is very, very good. Well, when you look at this year's New Year Six, uh, you and Penn State had losing seasons in 2020. Michigan is back to back playoff years after losing 2020. When Given such an outlier that COVID season was, how did you go about sort of what you took away from that, how you got back into the groove of, of 21 and now 22? Man, yeah. You don't, I wouldn't say you throw that season out, you know, because you have to learn from what does the film tell you, right? And what the film told us is here's where we're deficient, here's where we need to improve. You got to recruit to that. Um, we didn't feel like we were far off, but that did that season did provide some adversity in the sense that we're a man coverage team, and a lot of prep for that season, just because of COVID rules and regulations, we couldn't press. We couldn't do some things in practice that you normally do, and we had some young corners at that time, Clark being one of them, Clark Phillips being one of them. So his entire first season, he's playing a lot more zone coverage than we would have liked. So. Um, that, would, that would kind of be the difference in that 2020 season is we had to change a little bit of who we were schematically. Now, having said that, we learned a lot about what we liked about zone coverage. And, and so you take, you know, kind of what you were forced to do, um, you know, and uh, you take the best of both worlds, you know, who we are and, and kind of things that we liked from that season. Morgan, there's still, uh, you know, um decisions to be made, guys might be going back, etc. Mm -hmm. Where do you believe uh, Nate Richard might fit in in, uh, in 23 once he comes back? Oh, we're excited for him. Yeah. Gets home on the 30th of this month. This month. Yeah. And uh, he's another versatile athlete, a lot like Cole Bishop, a lot like Sione Vaki, that he's going to find his way on the field. It was a starter for us before he left, so I don't anticipate that being any different. Now, he's going to have to get his mission legs underneath them, and, and uh, we'll see how his body has developed as well. But, you know, we're excited for him, and, and we're going to put the best 11 on the field. Now we're not going to put 11 safeties on the field, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll find the best fit. And uh, all our guys understand that you are always competing for a job. You know, 
We don't promise anything to anybody other than the opportunity to, to compete. And that's why, you know, I love coaching these guys. You alluded to this, but when a kid comes off a mission mm -hmm. and comes back to you guys, is there is there some level of mystery, like what they're going to look like, what kind of shape, their body, etc.? You bet. Uh, I mean, not so much nowadays because you got, e you know, email and pictures sure. and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, each mission's different. Some missions, the mission president gives you the, them access to, to weights and weightlifting. Um, some, um, some, some missions, they're, you know, out in the middle of nowhere and, and they've got no access to it. So... You know, uh, Doug LSI, our strength staff, does a great job of when they get off their mission, bringing them in, assessing where they're at, letting us know, you know, with the nutrition staff, what needs to happen in order for, for the player to be ready enough to, you know, it's one, it's one thing to be running all, or in doing push-ups, it's another thing to, to in, in combat, right? So, you know, they do a great job of letting us know when they're ready. Tell me about, like, that RSM model your defense has and what that means and how you guys can take for that. Well, it, you know, our culture is something that we take pride in. Uh, RSMB, Relentless Smart Nasty Ball Hawks, it's something that we established a year, I think my second year uh, as a defensive coordinator, but it really ties into Coach Whitting's, Whittingham's uh, team wide culture. Um, you know, culture's everything, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, if you don't create it, it's going to create itself. And sometimes, a lot of the time, it's not what you want. So, our guys understand that being relentless makes up for a lot of mistakes on the field. Uh, playing smart is not, you know, smart situationally, understanding an offense, how they're going to attack in different situations. Nasty is not, you know, blowing snot rockets and, 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 and yelling and screaming. It's, it's taking ownership in your role, not giving excuses, not making excuses. And, uh, and then ball hawks is just, a, you know, the ball's meant for our offense to have it, not for their offense to have it. we got to get it back. I think Penn State has tried to build themselves to compete with teams like Ohio State. Um, from what you've seen on film, how does Penn State compare to what you saw from Ohio State last year? Well, you know, you, you look at the way they run the ball on those teams, and I would say they're pretty effective at it, you know. Now, each each game provides its its own, you know, Matchups, disadvantages, advantages. I'm not, you know, as aware of of what those are against the the, the, te the teams that they play. Um, I'm not watching their defense as well. So tough, tough to tell. I'm focused on the Utes. Morgan, uh, maybe I'm writing off TCU at my own peril, but it seems like the national title game is going to be either Georgia Michigan rematch or an Ohio State uh, Michigan in season rematch. Uh, when you play a, a team every year in conference versus maybe playing a non-conference opponent a couple years in a row, how similar or different is that when when you have a degree of familiarity from one year to the next? Well, I, I would say in in these games, you know, preparing preparing for a bowl game is a lot like preparing for week one, in the sense that you've got enough time to change some things up, right? I think if anyone that's paying attention to these bowl games. And these these uh, cross conference uh, games, it's it's tough to tell anything uh, because you have opt outs, you have changes, you know, guys hitting the portal, uh, you have uh, time to prepare and, and, and implement scheme that maybe a, a team hasn't seen before, right? And so I would say that the teams that fundamentally and technically are the most sound and physical are usually the teams that end up winning. You played Oregon twice last year, USC twice this year. What, what goes into that dynamic when, when you sort of used all your stuff against each other already once in the year? Yeah, it, you know, um, obviously you've got to do a great job of self-scouting. What did we do against them? What, what are they going to use to counteract Right, I, you know the the primary scheme that we used against USC, or a good deal of it, was something that they hadn't seen before from us. It was a a three down odd front um, that, again, because of our guys' buy in, you know, we were able to do something like that. And and uh, credit to our players and our coaching staff for for coaching it up. But uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that you got to do: self scout and 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 provide something that second time around that they haven't seen before. Morgan, if I may real quick. Um, last one, guys, last one. 
Clark Phillips, the California kid. Do you mind just tell me a little bit about him? I know he's not playing in this game, but just what does he mean to the program? I, I, I wish I had a ton of them. Uh, you talk about a guy that completely bought into your program and, and from day one was a yes coach, yes sir, uh, football player, willing to do whatever. Um, can't say enough good things about Clark Phillips and uh, some team is going to be lucky enough to have him uh, a part of their program. He's going to do right off the field, he's going to do right on the field and uh, uh, great job by you know, Sh Sharif Shah uh, recruiting him and uh, developing him as well. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate it, guys. Thank you.